line from a praise chorus that they sing in Tizay. Tizay is a group of people in France that comes together to worship and praise, and it's meant for people that are young adults that I have officially been aged out of for a couple of years, so <laughs> I will never legit legitimately be able to go there and worship. But it's this idea, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This month, as we start, I can't believe it's another month, but as we enter into November, we're going to be looking at, for the entire month, what Jesus teaches us about his kingdom, about his reign. And it seems strange, almost, that we would start with this passage of scripture, because this time of the year, as we're moving closer to Advent, we don't normally go back to the cross. But we're doing that because here we find Jesus giving this assurance to a criminal of all people. As Jesus is asking, or as Jesus is hanging there, and he is asked by this man, Jesus, remember me. Jesus gives him this assurance. I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. <laughs> We talked about paradise last month or a couple weeks ago as we talked about the idea of the new heaven and the new earth. But what we're thinking about today as we consider the kingdom of God is how it is a reality here and now. Today, this day, Jesus Christ reigns in heaven. This day, that criminal who was assured paradise is sitting with his Savior. This day, all who we remember, men and women, boys and girls, those who breathed many breaths upon this earth for a long lifetime, and those who never were able to gasp for air at the beginning from the womb, we remember them because that is a promise. It's a sign of God's covenant. It's a sign that God gives to all of us. Now, we know that in, in society today, one of the simplest ways you can make someone feel loved and recognized and important is to remember and speak their name. Now, the opposite is if you completely blank on their names, it can be rude and awkward and embarrassing. I remember when I was having my bridal shower, I don't know, never ever do this to a bride or anybody that you're honoring at a shower, but somebody had the great idea that I would have to go around and name every person in the room and say my relation to them, how I knew them. And I was doing pretty well the first 10 or 15 people, and then I'm staring at my Aunt Ethel, and I cannot think of her name for anything. The woman lived behind me. I knew her my whole life. But you know those moments, you just blank, and you're a deer in the headlights, and you say, I know this person better than I know myself, but I cannot think of their name. And so I will never force someone to play that game. But it's awkward, but we try to remember, and we can't. In psychology today, they say that this is a problem that actually worsens with age, and I'll add sleep deprivation. But nearly 85% of middle-aged people and older adults forget names. Are you all with me there? 85%. <laughs> But to remember names is important on so many levels. It makes people not only feel good when they hear their name, but it makes them pay greater attention. Even if it's not them you're speaking of, they hear someone say their name, even in a crowd, even in a distance. It doesn't matter. Studies show that even if it's a noisy room, hearing our names can activate part of our brains that makes us pay more attention. So we feel better when people remember us, and worse when they don't. And so we find this criminal, at the end of his life, this act of repentance. He sees what is happening. He knows that this man hanging beside him 
has been wrongly accused. And even more, he recognizes that this is the Messiah. This is the Son of God. This is the one whose kingdom will reign forever and ever. And so he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So this criminal, though, he's not issuing a cognitive challenge for Jesus. He's not trying to say, are you one of the 15% Jesus who can remember names? But God remembering is about promise keeping. It's about deliverance. It's about God taking action in the life of this criminal and in the life of all those who God remembers. God, what God does here is significant because Jesus is giving this man a promise. Jesus is saying that he will be with <clears throat> again in paradise this day. And here's something fascinating. In the whole New Testament, in all of Scripture, in the New Testament, this criminal is the only one who is promised paradise. The only one. I think of one of my clergy colleagues who, um, as in, in all of our churches, we're celebrating those who have died in the past year. We're remembering our neighbors and our friends and our family. And there was some struggle in her congregation because of the people didn't know if they should include the name of someone who was killed in an act of violence down the street from the church because of them being a criminal. And people say, well, do we include this person in a roll call of the saints? Because they aren't the definition that we have of a saint. But I would say to her this day, yes. Because if Jesus can be with that criminal upon the cross, if Jesus could say at that moment of his own death, if he could say, you will be with me in paradise, that there's hope for all of us. That even if we don't feel like our lives are as saintly as those who have been canonized in the church for thousands of years, there's still this promise that we have that God remembers and God knows each and every one of our names. God has been remembering names since the beginning of time. In Genesis 8-1, God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. Genesis 19-29 says, So it was that when God destroyed the cities of the plain, God remembered Abraham. In Genesis 30, we hear, Then God remembered Rachel, and God heeded her and opened her womb, and she conceived and bore a son. And then we hear again in Exodus, God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. This morning, we come today to celebrate that God remembers with us. God knows the names of all of our dead, and God knows the names of all of us here. So as we come around this table, as we share in Holy Communion, we come remembering that our feast is a communion of the saints. That all of these names that we utter here, they are people who in the heavenly realm are with us. For as God remembered them, and we remember them, when we share at this table of Holy Communion, we're reminded that someday, in the sweet by and by, as Jesus remembers us, when we come fully into Christ's kingdom, that we too will eat and drink alongside all of those that we lift up now as we worship. Jesus, remember me when we come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember all of us by your grace, your mercy, and your love. Hallelujah. Amen.